you implement all that I'm going to share with you in this video, you'll be well on your way to becoming a freelance web developer and start banking that money in no time. In this video, I'll be covering everything you need to know about becoming a web developer, what you need to learn, how to set yourself as an expert and a professional web developer, how to structure your freelancing business, the right skills and tools that you need. We'll also talk about pricing strategies, hosting and domain options. Then talk about how to start freelancing and get clients, the best practices for working with clients to keep them coming back and referring more people to you. I've also created a free resource for you, a step-by-step -step roadmap to guide you on learning web development in a month. So be sure to watch this video to the end because I can assure you that it is packed with a lot of value for you. You won't want to miss it. First, let's define who a web developer is. A web developer is someone that develops websites and web applications. They can use a variety of technologies and languages to create this. Web developer can work on the front end, which is what the user can see and interact with on the website. But a web developer can work on the back end, which is the server side of the website, and it handles things like databases and security. Or they can work on both the front end and the back end. Web developers are kind of like the architect of the internet, except instead of building and designing buildings, they are developing and designing websites. Web developers work with clients either as part of a team or as freelancers. They can also work for a tech company or a tech startup as a front end developer, back end, or full stack developer. Now, let's talk about the kinds of work a web developer does. A web developer can build anything from a simple landing page to a complex e-commerce platform. Some specific type of work that web developers do include can designing and developing a website for small businesses like logistic websites, plumbing, real estate, dentists, salons, restaurants, they build a website for them. They can also develop a landing page for an app or a course. Web developers can also create a learning management system like Udemy, or a customer relationship management tool like HubSpot. Web developers can also build an e-commerce online store for a business that sells clothes, bag, sneakers, or even a business that sells digital products. They can also redesign an existing website to improve its look and its functionality. They can also build a custom web application for a real estate client that need a specific feature, such as a project management tool for his business, or a booking platform for hotels so web developers can build the varieties of things that live on the internet they can also build a SaaS tool SaaS means that's s-a-s means software as a service it's a cloud-based application where users pay for a software on a subscription basis some examples of SaaS are like zoom platform slack for businesses and so other SaaS tools so web developer does that so these are some of the use cases now, what skills do you need to be a web developer? As a minimum, you need to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it is used to structure the content on a website. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet, and it's used to style the website and make it visually appealing. JavaScript is a programming language that allows you to add interactive elements to a website like adding pop-ups, forms, and animation. In addition to these beginner skills, it's also helpful to know other technologies and frameworks like PHP and a CMS like WordPress. Now, PHP is a programming language that is often used in conjunction with HTML and JavaScript to build a dynamic website. WordPress is a content management system. It allows you to easily create and manage website. We'll discuss all about this in a bit. I will also discuss how you can get started in learning all these things that we have talked about. Remember that we talked about front end, back end, and full stack developers. There are different stacks that web developers use. Web development stack is a combination of tools and technologies used by a developer to build a website or a web application. The stack includes the combination of programming languages, frameworks, and libraries. I'll just mention two popular stacks that is well known. It's the main stack and LAMP, M-E-R-N. It stands for MongoDB, Express.js, React.js, and Note.js. LAMP stack comprises of Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP or Python. This is just for knowledge sake. We won't go deep in explaining each of these stack. How can we learn all this in a month? You need a laptop or a desktop computer. And also need a modern web browser like uh, Google Chrome. And finally, 
but most importantly you will need dedication here is the roadmap i've created and a step-by-step -step guide to get you started the first one is learning html start by learning the basis of html and working your way up to more advanced concepts so HTML is the first language that you learn. And this language, or it's not actually a language, it's a mock-up language. With HTML, we can create headlines, paragraphs, lists, and so on. It's kind of like the skeleton of the website. Without it, everything will be a jumbled mess. So as you learn HTML, try practicing it by creating simple web pages. In that resource I've created for you, I have a lot of projects that you can practice with. I'll show you how to use it later. Now, this will help you understand the concepts and see how they work in action. You can find plenty of free resources online to help you do this, including tutorials and courses to help you learn HTML. We'll be using W3 Schools, free code camp and youtube videos to learn these programming languages i've mentioned inside the free roadmap that i've created for you you'll find links to all the resources and practice projects you can use to learn each technology and language i'll show you how to use it learning css once you have a solid understanding of html it's time for you to move on to css with css you can style your website add flair to the website make them look professional control the layout of your pages, choose the color scheme and fonts, create visually appealing designs that engage your users. So think of it like the clothes you wear. They can be made from the same materials, but it comes with different styles and accessories. You can create a whole range of looks with the clothes by tweaking it how you want. As you learn HTML, try experimenting with different styles and layers to get a feel of how it works. We're going to use one week to learn the basis of HTML and CSS using this roadmap I've created. Learning JavaScript. After HTML and CSS, it's time to learn JavaScript. This will allow you to add interactive elements to your website, such as sliders. To make the website more engaging some of the things you can achieve with javascript is you can use javascript to validate forms to ensure that users enter the correct information before submitting you can use javascript to create animations such as hover effects and page transition you can also use javascript to handle user input in real time such as displaying live search results or updating a shopping cart loading and displaying data from external sources such as from apis and databases it's kind of like the special source that takes a website from boring to wow as you learn javascript try creating simple scripts that change the appearance or, or behavior of your website we're going to use one week to learn javascript learning php php is a powerful programming language that is used to build dynamic websites you can use it to connect to or interact with databases to store and retrieve data such as user accounts product listings analytics data you can also use php to create custom features and functionalities for websites such as login systems and user profiles it can also be used to create custom error pages or personalized recommendations it can also be used to create and manage sessions to track user actions and preferences across multiple pages now i'm giving you all these use cases to get an overview of what each programming language is does as you learn php try building simple scripts that interact with a database or that perform other backend tasks this will give you a taste of the capabilities of the language and to also help you understand how the language works learning wordpress finally it's time to learn wordpress wordpress is the content management system that allows you to easily create and manage websites it is widely used by small businesses and individuals it's a great platform for freelancers to build websites for clients wordpress is a popular choice for building blogs e-commerce stores business websites and other types of websites or web projects it's used by billions of people around the world so there are other cms that does the same thing as wordpress but we are going with wordpress because it is the most popular and is the one i use now you can use wordpress to design and build websites without knowing this programming language that we have discussed about like html css javascript and php you don't need to know how to code in order for you to use wordpress you can solely create a website on wordpress without writing a single line of code because there are pre-designed teams there are plugins that are available for you 
that allow you to create a professional looking website without any programming language in WordPress. However, if you know how to code, WordPress can be a more powerful tool. With a programming language, you can customize the website further. You can create your own themes and plugins, you can build more advanced features and functionality. We're going to talk more on that soon. PHP is the backbone of WordPress, it's the programming language that WordPress is built on. Now, as you learn WordPress, we are going to be building simple websites and customizing existing themes to get to feel of how WordPress works and how you can use it to create more advanced websites. We're going to use one week to learn the basis of PHP and also to learn WordPress. I'm giving you all this timeline so that you can structure this learning process to be quicker and start making money in no time. Now, I know all this might seem or sound overwhelming to you, but don't worry, like I said, I've created a roadmap that will guide you step by step through the learning process. I created this roadmap using Notion. Notion is a productivity and organization tool that allow users to create and manage a wide variety of content and tags. You can get this template by clicking this duplicate button. If you don't have a Notion account, it will prompt you to make an account. If you have a Notion account, this template will get duplicated to your dashboard. By the way, this is not sponsored by Notion. It's just a tool I love to use. But hey, Notion, I wouldn't like getting sponsored, so you can reach out to me. There is a table for learning HTML, a table for learning CSS, a table for learning JavaScript, a table for learning PHP, and finally, a table for learning WordPress. In each table, there is a not started category, in progress, and also completed category. In the not started section, you'll find the list of technologies and languages that you have not yet begun learning. There is a tab called Practice with Project to help you practice the languages you are currently learning. See the tab here, Practice with Projects. To assess a module or resource, just click on it. For example, in HTML tab, just click here, it will open up the module. And in this module, here is where you find the lesson. To begin learning each lesson, click on this link. There is a section for taking notes beneath it. Toggle the button. Here you can write your notes in the bullet list. When you finish each lesson, click the toggle button to write the key concepts you have learned. Then you can also write a summary of what you have learned, the concepts, or what you did not understand in the lesson. It will help you to go back and revisit it. The following section is a question and answer session. You can form and answer a question based on the lesson you have taken. If you also want to duplicate this or make another copy, just click these six dots by the side and then duplicate it. When you begin learning on any of the lessons, simply click and drag it from the not started section to the in progress section. This will allow you to keep track of what you are currently learning. Now, when you have finished it, just move it from the in progress to completed section. Now, in the table tab, here you'll find the resources that you're currently learning. Let's test it out. If you move this from not started to in progress, if you come to the table tab, you'll find it here. While in this list tab, you will see all the resources you have completed, or rather, the ones you have moved to completed. So the ones I've moved to completed when you go to this tab, you see all of them here. Now, if you find this roadmap helpful to you, don't forget to give it a five-star rating for following this link. By using this system, you can stay motivated and organized. Plus, it's also a great way to track the progress and see how far you have come. The link to get this free resource can be found in the description box below. Now, please note that the one month time frame I mentioned in this video is intended to help you to get started with freelancing and start building your web development skills. It's not meant to be a comprehensive guide to becoming a professional web developer because to truly excel in this field, you will need to continue learning and expanding your knowledge in web development technologies and also in different languages. Remember that the journey to becoming a web professional web developer, it never truly ends. There is always something to learn and discover in this exciting and constantly evolving field.
For example, I'm constantly trying to improve my skills. I learn the ones that are going to be beneficial to me, maybe in a project I'm building or in helping my clients. Now let's continue. Now that you have the skills you need to be a web developer, it's time to start freelancing. One tool that is particularly useful for freelancers is using a content management system, CMS like WordPress. WordPress is a great way to get your feet wet as a web developer and start building your portfolio. Like we discussed earlier, WordPress is a platform that allows you to easily create and manage websites without needing to know how to code. With your knowledge of HTML, CSS, and also using a page reader in WordPress, you can take on jobs to create websites and other web projects for clients. You can work as a freelance web developer for small businesses and individuals. WordPress is a great fit because custom coding is not always required for every project, and WordPress is easy to learn and get started with. So, in our roadmap, I've added links and resources for you to learn all the aspects of WordPress. One of the main benefits of using WordPress for creating a website for small businesses is that it provides a user-friendly interface that allows your client to simply update their own website. They don't need to keep running to you every time they want to make a small change, saving you both time. When working with clients as a freelance web developer, it's important to focus on building functional websites that are valuable to your clients, rather than focusing on the designing aspect. This means prioritizing the technical aspect of the project and avoiding getting too caught up in the design aspect. Designing the interface should not be the main focus of your work. You can draw inspiration for web design work in websites like Behance, Pinterest, or in Dribble. As you grow in your business, you might want to consider hiring a UI designer, even outsourcing to others to handle the design aspect or the visual aspect of your project so that you can focus more on building the technical aspects. If you're building a website for small business, one thing that will make you stand out is to create a website that is very useful to the client and a website that addresses the purpose of that business. For example, if it's a service business, is the website designed in a way that will get results for that business by maybe capturing leads or creating an optimized funnel? If it's an e-commerce website, is there a conversion rate optimization that is in place to generate more lead or more sales for that business? The truth of the matter is that it's so overwhelming to learn all these things. You just want to you know, build a website and get on with it. But if you want to truly excel, as a freelancer to small businesses, you must learn how to build a website that gets results. In addition to learning WordPress and using a page builder, it's also important that you learn WordPress development. This will allow you to tackle any problems that come up during the project. Because having the knowledge of custom code can be extremely useful. An extra backend functionality or a custom front-end design is needed. Using a plugin for every minor feature you want to do on your website can quickly blot or make the website big and make it slow. If you don't know what a plugin is, plugins are software that is developed by other web developers that is used to add a new functionality or extend an ex existing functionality on the website. Imagine you have a client who wants you to build a custom e-commerce checkout page for their online business, an e-commerce page that adjusts the shipping fee based on the customer's location. Now, without the knowledge of custom WordPress development, you would either have to use the plugin that may not even give you the exact customization option that you need, or you can hire a developer to create that custom solution for you. However, with the knowledge of a custom WordPress development, you can create the exact checkout page that your clients want without relying on a plugin, without hiring someone else to do it for you. But that's not to say that you cannot use plugin. I personally, I do use plugin on my client's websites. Having that knowledge makes it much easier to understand why things on the website happen or why it does not happen. For example, one of my clients had an issue with a course website. Whenever someone clicked on the link, it would not direct the person to the correct page that the link is supposed to take the person to. Now, I was able to fix this issue by regenerating the WordPress HT access file because of my knowledge of WordPress development. One thing to keep in mind as you start your journey as a freelance web developer is that you don't have to know everything in order for you to get started. It is important to have a solid foundation of skills. You can always outsource tasks or technologies that you are not familiar with. You can use a platform like Fiverr 
to find someone who has the expertise you need. Another thing to know is that there may be some website or web projects that you cannot build in WordPress. Using WordPress is just to get you started in building websites or doing some web projects for clients that have small businesses. For example, some of the websites or web applications that cannot be built in WordPress are highly customized e-commerce stores like Amazon, Alibaba, you cannot build that kind of website in WordPress because by WordPress, it does have an e-commerce functionality using a plugin like WooCommerce, but it's not suitable for stores that have a lot of custom features. Another type of project that you cannot build in WordPress are large-scale enterprise websites and web applications like maybe Netflix, LinkedIn, Airbnb. If you're building a website for a large enterprise with hundreds and thousands of pages, WordPress is not the most efficient option for you. So I just want to put it out there that while WordPress is a powerful and customization platform, there are certain websites and web applications that you cannot build on it. They may be too complex or they might require custom code that goes beyond the capabilities of WordPress. So WordPress is sustainable for certain freelance web developers that want to solely build their websites on taking jobs on WordPress sites. It can be sustainable. Just know that being a web developer goes beyond WordPress. Now let's talk about personal branding. Personal branding is super important as a freelance web developer. It helps you stand out in a crowded market and it also makes it more memorable to potential clients. Here are a few ways how you can create a strong personal brand as a freelance web developer. The first one is creating a portfolio website that will showcase your work, and your accomplishments. This will also give potential clients a clear idea of what you're capable of. It's also a good idea to build several websites and web projects to add to your portfolio. This could include a business website, a blog, an e-commerce platform, even just a fictional project they can create for the purpose of showcasing your skill. Building a diverse range of projects can demonstrate your flexibility and ability to work on a variety of projects. Use social media to your advantage. Share updates about your work, the projects that you're working on. This will help you to build a following and establish yourself as an expert in your field. Participate in online community and forums related to web development. This will give you the opportunity to network with other professionals and share your knowledge with others. Write blog posts or articles about your experience as a web developer. This will not only help you improve your writing skill, but it will also help you establish yourself as a thought leader in your industry. I don't do this one yet, but I intend to start writing blog posts. Who is starting with me? <laughs> Attend events or conference related to web development. This will now give you the opportunity to meet other professionals and also learn from experts. Next, consider establishing a clear niche or specialty within web development. This could be building a specific type of website, such as e-commerce website or service website, or it could even mean using a particular programming language. By focusing on a specific area, you can attract clients that are looking for someone with specific expertise. Now, finally, make sure to consistently deliver high quality work to your clients. This means meeting deadlines, communicating effectively with your clients and going above and beyond to ensure that your clients are satisfied. Let's talk about business structure. As a freelance web developer, it is important to have a clear business structure and system in place to ensure that you are operating efficiently and effectively. Let me tell you what this includes. Number one is setting a legal business entity such as sole proprietorship. It can also entail registering your business. This will help you to provide a clear separation between your personal and business finance. It can also help you to take your freelancing business seriously. And since you know that it is registered, it will help you not to treat it as a hobby. See, freelancing is a serious business. When you start treating it as one, you will see that the business revenue will grow and the business itself will grow. Another business structure is developing a standard operating procedure for your business. That's SOP. SOP is a step-by-step -step instruction that is compiled by an organization to help workers carry out routine operations. I know as a one-person business, you might feel that you don't need to do this in your freelancing business. But having an SOP can be a form of structure for your freelancing business. It makes sure that you do not miss a step while working on a client's project. It ensures that you provide maximum value for your client. See, it's sort of like a checklist. And for a freelancing business that wants room for growth, that is by either hiring a team or an assistant, having an SOP will be very stable for it. So 
the SOP should align the steps you take to complete tasks, steps to complete the planning stage of a project, the designing stage, the development stage, the testing stage, the launching stage, and any other stage in your project. You should also outline how you handle communication with clients, how you manage client timeline, and how you handle payments. Another form of structure is creating a proposal template and contracts to streamline the process of working with clients. A proposal template should outline your services, your price, your terms, while the contract should clearly spell out the terms of your agreement with that client. What I did is combine the two of them together as a service agreement. You really need to have a contract in your freelancing business so that you and your clients will be on the same term. Setting up invoices and receipt system for keeping track of your finances and to ensure that you are paid on time and in full for your work. This may involve using an invoicing software or creating your own templates by generating professional looking invoices and receipts for your client. You can use a tool like Canva to design your invoices and receipts. By implementing these systems and tools, you can establish yourself as a reliable freelancer developer that knows what you do. Now, we need to think about how to get clients. You know, this is the juicy part that everybody wants to know because getting clients and making money is the real deal. My first recommendation on getting clients is through word of mouth. This method can be a very powerful method. Just start by letting your family and your friends know about your business and know what you offer. Share your services on your personal social media profiles and post it on your WhatsApp status and Facebook. Why? You might not see the results immediately from this your efforts. It's important to remember that people are registering it in your head that this is what you do. They will know that ah, this person he offers web development services. He's my friend. I know what he does, but the fact that I don't need his service now, but I know that he offers web development services. Now, when they or someone that they know is in need of those services, they will remember you. They will potentially reach out or refer others to you. That was how I got my first client. I'm still going to make a separate video for that. I was so over with the moon and so happy. Let's talk about other ways you can get clients. I'm just going to list them out and talk briefly on, on me. This video is already long, so I'll just make this section short. We'll do a more in-depth video solely on all the ways to get clients as a freelance web developer. Now, the first one is social media marketing. This means using social media to market your services. It can be on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, or even on YouTube here. Create a strong presence on social media by showcasing your work. Share how you can bring value to your client. It's very, very important. If you want somebody to see your expertise, tell that person what you do. And if that person is listening to you, will be like, ah, this person knows what he's talking about. Sharing valuable content that educates, that inspires your clients, your ideal clients, thereby attracting new clients to you. Another way is freelance websites like Fiverr and Upwork. There are many websites and platforms that allow freelancers to find and apply for job opportunities. I'll be honest with you, I've not tried out this platform for getting clients before, but if you learn how it works and set up a profile and learn from somebody that gets clients from it, you surely get results. Another method is content marketing. Now, create valuable content such as blog posts or videos that showcase your expertise and the one that will attract your potential clients. Now, this is the route I'm currently taking. It means using content to attract your prospective clients. It can also be on social media too. This content can be classified into educational, promotional, inspirational content. When someone finds out that you know what you're talking about through your content, they instantly convert themselves to paying clients. You don't have to do much work to convince them or to close that client because your content has already done it for you. Your content that already shows that you know what you are doing. Another way is creating a personal website. Your website can showcase your work, can list out your services, can provide contact information for potential clients to reach out to you. But most of the time, you have to have a strong SEO for clients to find you through your website. And that might include writing targeted blog posts. Another way is email marketing and cold outreach. Now, if this is not done correctly, this method will not be effective. 
cold outreach or cold calling means reaching out to businesses or individuals directly through emails or through phone calls and pitching your services to them in order for you to convert them to new clients when you are doing this method make sure that you personalize each outreach and have a clear value proposition for them in order to increase your chances of success another way of getting clients is through networking attending events joining professional organization connecting with other professionals in your industry can help you to build relationship and also help you to find new clients another way is through paid advertising i found out that sticking to one or two ways to get clients is always effective you can try them all then you can figure out which one works best for you then stick to it put all your effort into it and it will be a consistent client generating process for you all a lot of the comments i'm getting is how do you get clients how do i get clients there's a lot of way to get clients just make sure that you're specializing on the one that works best for you and keep it i'll still make a separate video to address this now make sure to do a great job on your first few projects as this will help you to get more referrals in the future 70 percent of the work you do will come from referrals ask any freelancer it's also important to think about how to make your clients happy and to keep them coming back for more work this can involve things like having a good work ethics like paying attention to detail having an effective communication skill with clients providing excellent customer service and you can also do something that we call under promising and over delivering on your project you can tell your clients that this project uh, it will be finished on the 25th but you surprise them and deliver it on the 20th by going above and beyond for your clients you'll be able to earn their trust and their loyalty when it comes to pricing and charging your clients it's important to consider the country that you are in and the price rate for web development in that country then customize the prices according to what you feel are the worth of your service and the worth of your time there are different payment strategies you can consider for example you might charge an upfront amount for a project or you can charge 70% before the start of the project and then 30% when the project is completed. It's up to you to decide which pricing model works best for you and your business. You'll also need to think about where you get hosting and domains for the website that you build. There are many options out there, but I personally recommend Voucher and Nameship. Voucher offers a virtual private server, that is VPS, and the website I host on it is pretty fast i also use nameship you can buy domain and equally hosting for them you can get a wordpress hosting shared hosting from them for your clients it just depends on the suitable hosting for your project need these are the two i use you can find the links to this hosting in the description box below if you decide to purchase through this link i'll receive a small commission at no extra cost to you there will also be a link on how to set up Vulture VPS if you're interested in it. Becoming a web developer in a month, starting freelancing is actually doable. It's definitely possible if you have the right skills and the resources. So following this structured roadmap that I've laid out for you to learn these technologies, branding yourself, setting yourself up as a professional, you'll be well on your way to building a very successful freelance web development business. As you continue to grow and develop as a web developer, remember to find what works for you. This could mean specializing in a particular niche or as a tester freelancing, you might find out that you want to seek for employment that freelancing is not working for you, that is not for you. Or you might even find out that you want to start this full time, that you want to start your own agency and employ people that you will outsource a lot of things to. Whatever part you choose, it is important to keep learning and advancing your skills. Don't forget to get the free resource I've prepared for you in the description box. I would also love to hear about your progress as you start freelancing and building your web development business. If you have any questions whatsoever or you have any issues, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at case underscore overview. Or you can also send me an email. I'm always happy to help and offer my recommendations. Now that you're starting out in web development, you want to learn how to get steady and recurrent leads that will generate a lot of income for you. Click this video on your screen now to watch it. Click to watch it to learn how you can get steady clients.